Hey guys, Lord Naren White here, the Holy Ghost, the one true God. Back with you with the next video in my Daily Diary series. As usual, before I discuss what I have achieved since yesterday's Daily Diary video, I want to read you a chapter from the Bible. Today it will be the fourth book of Moses called Numbers, chapter 33. These are the journeys of the children of Israel, which went forth out of the land of Egypt with their armies under the hand of Moses and Aaron. And Moses wrote their goings out according to their journeys by the commandment of the Lord. And these are their journeys according to their goings out. And they departed from Ramses in the first month, on the fifteenth day of the first month, on the morrow after the Passover, the children of Israel went out with an high hand in the sight of all the Egyptians. For the Egyptians buried all their firstborn. Excuse me. After the Passover of the children of Israel went out with an high hand to the sight of all the Egyptians. For the Egyptians buried all their firstborn, which the Lord had smitten among them. Upon their gods also the Lord executed judgments, and the children of Israel removed from Ramses, and pitched in Succoth. And they departed from Succoth, and pitched in Etham, which is in the edge of the wilderness. And they removed from Etham, and turned again unto Pi Hahiroth, which is before Baal Sephon. And they pitched before Migdal, and they departed from Pi Hahiroth and passed through the midst of the sea into the wilderness, and went three days' journey in the wilderness of Etham, and pitched in Marah. And they removed from Marah, and came unto Elim. In Elim were twelve fountains of water, and threescore and ten palm trees, and they pitched there. And they removed from Elim, and encamped by the Red Sea. And they removed from the Red Sea, and encamped in the wilderness of Sin. And they took their journey out of the wilderness of Sin, and encamped in Dofka. And they departed from Dofka, and encamped in Alush. And they removed from Alush, and encamped in Rephidim, which was no water for the people to drink. And they departed from Rephidim, and pitched in the wilderness of Sinai. And they removed from the desert of Sinai, and pitched at, at Kibroth Hatiba. And they departed from Kibroth Hatiba and encamped at Hazaroth. And they departed from Hazaroth, and pitched in Rithma. And they departed from Rithma, and pitched at Ramon Perez. And they departed from Ramon Perez, and pitched in Libna. And they removed from Libna, and pitched at Rissa. And they journeyed from Rissa, and pitched in Kehelatha. And they went from Kehelatha, and pitched in Mount Shape. And they removed from Mount Shafer and encamped in Harada. And they removed from Harada and pitched in Makeloth. And they removed from Makeloth and encamped at Tahath. And they departed from Tahath and pitched at Tarah. And they removed from Tarah and pitched at Inmilka, Mithka. And they went from Mithka and pitched in Hashmana. And they departed from Hashmana and encamped at Moseroth. And they departed from Moseroth and pitched in Benejakan. And they removed from Benejakan and encamped at Horhagidgad. And they went from Horhagidgad and pitched in Joth Joth Jothbatha. And they removed from Jothbatha and encamped at Ath Ebrona. And then they departed from Ebrona and encamped at Ezion Geber. And they removed from Ezion Geber and pitched in the wilderness of Zin, which is Kadesh. And they removed from Kadesh and pitched in Mount Hor in the edge of the land of Edom. And Aaron the priest went up into the Mount Hor at the commandment of the Lord and died there. In the fortieth year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt in the first day of the first month. And Aaron was an hundred and twenty-three and three years old when he died in Mount Hare. And King Arad the Canaanite, which dwelt in the south in the land of Canaan, heard of the coming of the children of Israel. 
And they departed from Mount Hor and pitched in Zomana. And they departed from Zomana and pitched in Punan. And they departed from Punan and pitched in Obath. And they departed from Obath and pitched in Aij Abarim in the border of Moab. And they departed from Im and pitched in Dibon Gad. And they removed from Dibon Gad and encamped in Almon Diblathaim. And they removed from Almon Diblathaim and pitched in the mountains of Abarim before Nebo. And they pitched from the mountains of Abarim and pitched in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho. And they pitched near by Jordan from Beth, Beth Jesimoth even unto Abel, Abel Shittim in the plains of Moab. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye are passed over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land before you, and destroy all their pictures, and destroy all their molten images, and quite pluck down all their high places. And ye shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land, and dwell therein, for I have given you the land to possess it. And ye shall divide the land by lot for an inheritance among your families, and to the more ye shall give the more inheritance, and to the fewer ye shall give the less inheritance. Every man's inheritance shall be in the place where his lot falleth. According to the tribes of your fathers ye shall inherit. But if ye will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall come to pass that those of you which ye let remain of them shall be pricks in your eyes, and thorns in your sides, and shall vex you in the land wherein ye dwell. Moreover, it shall come to pass that I shall do unto you as I thought to do unto them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, I want to go ahead and discuss the power of Jehovah in this chapter here. Take a look at what he says here. First and foremost, the value of multiplying fruit. This is one thing that is so, so, so important. Multiplication of one seed. And I, I haven't written this chapter yet in the Gospel according to Lord Nairn. Uh, why? Because I'm still uh, thinking about the marriage chapter. Because it's a very important chapter. How I want to uh, write the chapter. What the principles of marriage in Nairn Jalsism will be. It's a very important principle because it affects... A potential uh, infinite amount of uh, people and obviously the infinity is not a concept that anyone in levels two through seven can understand but just take a sample size for example of how long the world has been here for which is 6022 years that's a long time and that might by principles of marriage will affect people for that long and longer and that's why I'm saying you know um, it's very important about how I write my gospel for this reason and so I've been thinking about that and that's why I haven't discussed my chapter about multiplication yet and why I discuss it as so important is right here in Numbers 33, 54 um, through 56. So the Lord discusses how they, um, you know, he tells Moses, speak to the children of Israel and discuss how they, sh they, they will drive out the inhabitants of the land of Canaan, destroy all their pictures, destroy all their molten images and quite pluck down all their high places. And they shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land and dwell therein for I've given you the land to possess it. Now that the scripture reads, and ye shall divide the land by lot for an inheritance among your families. And to the more ye shall give the more inheritance. And to the, and to the fewer ye shall give the less inheritance. What does Lord Jesus say? To him hath, to who hath, to him shall be given. Of course, he discusses that in the parable of the towns. But it is nevertheless the true all the same. That who brings more men, to him shall be given. And to the fewer less shall be given. Every man's inheritance shall be in the place where his lot falleth. According to the tribes of your fathers, ye shall inherit. But if ye will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall come to pass that those which ye let remain of them, he warned them, he says, but if ye will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall come to pass that those which ye let remain of them shall be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your sides, and shall vex you in the land wherein ye dwell. 
Moreover, if ye it shall come to pass, then I shall do unto that I shall do unto you as I thought to do unto them. He says, if ye if they do not drive out the inhabitants, and this is the beauty of free will. You know, people discuss God's divine plan, and it's so true. It's so true. This is what is amazing to me. Um, you know what's funny is I, I truly believe this that God does know the future. He really does. For example, I look at it this way. In Jesus' book, after the great, in the, during the great white throne judgment, only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book can enter into, into his city, will, will be given eternal life. Now, I, I say this to say, for example, does God know whether or not I'm going to move my hand left or right or whatever? Yeah, he does. And I have the free will to do something good in my life, I'm saying. In my, for me, in my case, my eternity. John 14, 16. And I'm saying all this to say, while two things can be true. One, each soul is all, God already knows is from heaven or hell. They are either children of God or they are children of Satan. And the people have the free will. Notice how the Lord says here, in Numbers 33, 52, it's a very beautiful example. He says, Then ye shall drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you. So he tells them they will drive out the land. And then he says in Numbers 33, 55, because he knows they also have free will. They have the decision not to fight for the land of Canaan. They have a decision, free will to make a decision. He says, But if ye will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall come to pass that those which ye let remain of them shall be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your sides and shall vex you in the land wherein ye dwell. So those who are left over, if ye do not drive them out, they will prick the people who the land is for. And then it says here, Moreover, it shall come to pass that I shall do unto you, he's saying to the Jews, that Jehovah is saying to the Jews, Moreover, it shall come to pass that I shall do unto you as I thought to do unto them. That is the power of Lord Jealous. And now, with that, I will go ahead and transition over to what I have achieved since yesterday's Daily Diary video. Since yesterday's Daily Diary video, I worked my software developer job and I created this Daily Diary video for 7.25.22. And with no further achievements since yesterday's Daily Diary video, I want to say thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe as it greatly helps the channel. Like to be with you all. Take care and thanks again.